Chad Merkin is the director of Northwestern's International Institute for Nanotechnology. With nanotechnology, one of the basic premises is that everything when miniaturized is different. When you take silver and break it down into really small particles or learn how to synthesize it in small particle form, it can be that color, or it can be that color, or it can be a nice northwestern purple, uh, or it can even be that color. Uh, so this is one material and four completely different colors or optical properties. Uh, and, and that's basically true for all, all materials, that when you miniaturize and make them into really small particles, they'll end up having very different properties from the bulk material from which they derive. The stained glass windows in the great cathedrals of medieval Europe contained nano-sized particles of silver and gold. Glassmakers found that adding these finely powdered metals to molten glass made the windows change color at different times during the day, though they were not sure why this was true. Nanotechnologists today tell us that the light absorbed by the nanoparticles of gold and silver is different in color from the light reflected by these particles, which accounts for the mystical quality of the stained glass windows. This nano principle was used even earlier in history. A Roman glass cup made in the 4th century AD is an opaque green when viewed away from direct light, but turns a translucent red when light passes through it. Again, nano-sized particles of silver and gold in the glass are responsible. But what does all this have to do with you? Coming up, we'll show you how gold is being used to build nanostructures, and how those nanostructures will one day in your lifetime help regenerate damaged spinal cord tissue, destroy cancer cells without harming healthy ones, make computers you can't see with the naked eye, and solve the world's energy crisis. Stay tuned.